Good morning everybody. My name is Peter Fitt. I'm the director of the Maritime Institute and welcome to our video lecture number four on marine insurance. Insurance we're going to cover is about insurance of cargo, insurance of the ship and insur insurance for third party events. Those we're going to cover just now. But before we start let's get things straight that when we talk about marine insurance we're actually talking about maritime and when we're talking about insurance we are talking about the sale of risk where the risk is the possibility of a disruption or an unplanned event now as I'm talking to you there are floods in Manitoba where houses are being washed away. There has been the horror of the tsunami in Japan, which was also an unplanned event. Last year we had uh, a volcano erupt in Iceland that disrupted air travel. So there is many occurrences, natural and man-made, that can disrupt an enterprise or a venture for which we have to find some way of compensating us in the event of that happening. So within this insurance we're going to look at insure risk in international trade. But we must remember that 90 percent of international trade goes by sea and safe is free from risk so we want to create as much as possible a safe environment in which in which to transport goods from one area of the world to another I'll give you some examples of things that can go wrong in international trade and maritime transport Containers can get lost overboard in a storm. But of course there could be contributing factors that the containers weren't secured properly. A ship can be fined for having for, for landing a stowaway in a different country. This in other words, this is an unplanned event, but we try to prevent it. But if it doesn't, does happen and we get fined, we want to have some sort of compensation for the fines that we're going to have to pay. It could be that the ship coming into the port in a, in a, in a howling gale damages the key and damages the ship. And there is where insurance of the ship is so important that there is money there, money available to pay to repair the ship and repair the key. And there are two different types there. That is insurance of the hull and a third party event, but we'll get to that later on. It could be the cargo gets stolen. Yes, it's true, every now and again some bright spark will find a way of hijacking a container full of whiskey and he's not going to get drunk for a year, he's going to sell that and make a lot of money. But these are things that are going to happen and they do happen. And unfortunately ships go aground as well as they've done for centuries. So if any of these events happen, it's going to cause a loss to someone. Someone's going to be out of pocket because of that. So we need money, those dollar signs, and the, not US dollars because that's too weak these days. We need dollars to compensate somebody. So insurance is about covering the risk with money. So I've drawn a bag full of money there. And the way that insurance works is that the person who wants is something insured is going to pay a thing called a premium to the person who's putting up the money to cover the risk. And that amount of risk is calculated as a percentage. 
Now what we'll see as we're going through this is that one can lower the risk and as you lower the risk you actually lower the premium that you have to pay. Now where did all this start? And this is where it really gets interesting. Actually insurance has been going on for many 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 years but we're going to just cut short a little bit and we're going to go to 1550. In 1550 in Britain they already realized the trade is the major generator of economic growth. The more you can buy and sell the more your country will prosper. But in those days it wasn't iron ships, it was wooden ships and iron men. They had no charts, they didn't know much about the rest of the world, they were going to unknown places, they were trading with unknown people, there were all sorts of risks involved including the weather. But to prosper, they had to continue with exploration, colonization, and trade. Now, in 1550, there was a very bright lady you've heard a lot of. It's Queen Elizabeth I of England. She was an extremely popular queen, and she was, as we say, a pretty bright cookie. Her explorers, her traders, her ship owners were reluctant to go and search for uh, new goods in foreign lands and take British products to sell there because the risk was too high. There was just a reluctance. They weren't getting any compensation for any loss. So she came up with a bright idea. She had a lot of lords and ladies and gentlemen of the realm who were very wealthy people. Not, they didn't keep their money in a, in, a, in a box. Their money, their wealth was in their buildings and so on, but they had, a, they had a lot of money to be able to compensate somebody in the event of risk. So they called these people names. They gave them names and she put them together in syndicates and they put up the money to cover the risk in international trade. Now we're going to jump forward to the year 1700 when insurance got itself organized. There was these names in these syndicates who had an individual who was an underwriter who worked with the ship owner, the cargo owner, the broker to, to cover insurance. These people would meet with these people and they would agree on a policy and how much the, the risk was involved. And they would draw up an agreement or a contract. Along came a very bright guy by the name of Edward Lloyd, and you've heard a lot about Lloyds of London, well he was the forerunner of this. He decided to build a coffee house and attract the brokers and the underwriters to come and drink coffee. He provided boxes for them to sit on, quill pens, paper. He provided a place where they could do business buying and selling insurance. And this was the start of the London Lloyd's Marketplace. These brokers and underwriters would work together on drawing up a contract which became known as a policy. So they would pay a premium and they would pay a premium and their loss would be compensated for a listed event that might happen. So a policy is a contract. It's an agree agreement to pay an amount of money on the occurrence of a listed event. It's a written record of an agreement between two parties. This contract falls under common laws of society. In, in negotiating this contract, there must be full disclosure of both parties in utmost good faith. The Latin term is abrume fide, which, which means in utmost good faith and comes from Emperor Justinian and Emperor of Rome. Now, isn't that interesting? Thank you so much for watching this. And I'm going to invite you to listen to Larry Jessica.
Thank you for joining us today. To learn more, please contact us at maritime at shaw.ca. Thank you very much.